And we're back with more news that just helps clarify the days we're in. This story is about Minnesota State University Associate Professor Eric Sprankle, who tweets such golden goodies as the sigil of Baphomet to his Twitter feed, but describes himself as a secularist. Very edgy. Eric. That sounds like the apologist tagline of the Church of Satan, whose members often claim to be atheists. Because who is content with being an atheist when you can join a Church of Satan? The logic is brilliant. At any rate, Professor Sprankle tweeted on December 3rd on the virgin birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, suggesting that Yahweh is a sexual predator. Oh, wow. Another quote, secularist who just so happens to have a vicious hatred for our God of the Holy Bible. What a shocker. But it's provocative. This man couldn't possibly be hosting demons. Oh no, definitely not. The December 3rd tweet reads, The virgin birth story is about an all-knowing, all-powerful deity impregnating a human teen. There is no definition of consent that would include that scenario. Happy holidays. So edgy, Eric. Many on Twitter responded to Professor Sprankle. One Twitter user pointed out Sprankle's ignorance of the biblical story he decided to comment on, writing, Sorry, Luke chapter 1 verse 26 and then 38 states clearly that the angel communicated God's plan for Mary, and in verse 38 she agreed. Whether you believe or disbelieve, it helps if you actually read the text. Ah, yes, reading the Bible. As usual, we find that most who harbor a visceral hatred for the Word of God do not, in fact, know a thing about it. When they need ammo, they'll just hop on Google and find a few common passages used to attack God's Word while completely excluding any sort of context. Sprinkler responded to the man who straight up made a fool of him with, The biblical God regularly punished disobedience. The power difference, deity versus mortal, and the potential for violence for saying no, negates her yes. To put someone in this position is an unethical abuse of power at best, and grossly predatory at worst. Oh, what a brilliant sweetheart. He sounds as full of himself as Penn Jillette. So when someone says they believe in the word of God literally, I go back and think about Genesis where people are living to be 900 years old. And I say bullshit. Who also just happens to have an affinity for Satan. They're just secularists and atheists who happen to be Satanists. Our world is black and white. You're not a so-called truther until you figure out that the reason Satan seems to be behind every conspiracy you research is not just because a bunch of dummies are running the show. I mean, they are dummies, but because God is real and so is Satan. You'll continue to scratch your head until you find the key that unlocks everything. And his name is Jesus Christ. You know, the way, the truth, the life. Sprankle is quite obviously a Satanist. He capped his Christmas tree, which of course is of pagan origin, with an inverted pentagram and also posted a statue of Baphomet with an elf to his Twitter. Sprankle is an associate professor of clinical psychology, <clears throat> one of the devil's weapons, and sexual studies, and boasts that he is for sex workers' rights. Here he is hanging out with his buddy, Marilyn Manson. Wake up, folks. It's not a Hollywood thing. It's not just your politicians and the wealthy. It's global. Welcome to the new days of Noah. You were born on Witchcraft Planet. Before we close, let's just have a look at a few more tweets from Mr. Sunshine. Like this photo of Saturn devouring a child, his son by Francisco Goya. Or this book about how teen girls can get off. Do note the one-eye symbolism, as you are living in the days of Noah and need to wake up right now or he and his girl having a leisurely romantic day 
hanging out in the graveyard. And also, of course, the pallbearer bunny rabbits. Because what Satanist's collage of memories is complete without the old rabbit symbolism? I also quite like this photo, captioned, In 1979, literally everyone in my social network would have had a diagnosable sexual disorder. Too true, Eric. But now you're an enlightened professor of clinical psychology. Guess what? Go back about a hundred years before that, and they'd have been called a demoniac. Oh, how times have changed. And finally, a photo all about family, captioned, My dad has always unconditionally supported his demon spawn for Father's Day. Seeing as how Satanism is fairly often generational, I'd say that's probably quite accurate. Jeremiah Cohen reporting once again from the Apocalypse.